Hello, it's me, French Ted, and we are here. It is LLW Presents London's Calling, our WrestleMania, our All Out, our Wrestle Kingdom, our, our Slammiversary, our NWA Anniversary, our... I run out of examples. Our, what's the Lucha Underground one? The uh, Azteca thing? I don't know. That, yeah. It's our biggest show of the year. It's our biggest show of the series so far. We've got just shy of 10,000 people here. We've had to go for the Wembley Arena because there's nothing between like 8,000 to 12,000. So there are quite a few empty seats, but they're right at the back, so don't worry. Uh, we're at the Wembley Arena, huge, huge venue. Um, and I'm really hoping that we have a really, really, really good show. Now, there's a lot of matches on this card. We've got a big, big main event, something that I think has been building for a long, long time. So I'm hoping that Drew Galloway and Ashton Smith put on one hell of a clinic. Ashton Smith, clinic, sorry. Ashton Smith has been easily our MVP, our top guy, for the longest time and obviously there are much bigger names than Ashton Smith in LLW to name a few you've got Drew Galloway, Pac, Claudio Castagnoli, Joe Anawaii you know there's a number of names that we could list off who are on paper bigger than Ashton Smith but no one has risen to the occasion like him so you know let's hope that this is a great show not just for him but for everyone involved and hopefully um, it can help us push towards medium because that is the goal. I mean, this is going to be a great show nonetheless. We're going to easily clear that 59 pop that we need. But how much of a boost is it going to give us towards medium? I want to get there as soon as possible. I think the target is February, maybe. I don't know. We'll have to see. Um, but we are here. We're in the pre-show to begin. We've got one pre-show match. And it is the Women's Battle Royale. As always, there are a bunch of matches here that I have not chosen the winner for because I kind of like doing it like that. It keeps me on my toes um, and that way I can react the same way that I imagine some of you may react. Um, but William Regal, of course, is welcoming the crowd to London's Calling, biggest show of the year for Lariat League Wrestling, who I believe now are the biggest company in the UK. So suck on that progress, suck on that Rev Pro, rest in peace suck on that pro wrestling eve suck on that icw if they're still a thing i don't know um and all the other companies uh we are the biggest one in the uk and we are slowly gonna take over the world but yeah sorry i'm i'm excited let's head straight into the first match which is the women's battle royale the winner will become the new number one contender for the queen of the lariat league title which is defended later on tonight in a three-way ladder match all right Let's get straight into the first match of the show. And in a decent pre-show Battle Royale match, Steph Delander gets the win. She defeats everyone in just over 20 minutes in our Women's Battle Royale. The fight members of the final four were Danny Luna, Heidi Katrina and Kanji, with Danny Luna being the final elimination. Heidi Katrina, though, our former Queen of the Lariat League, got the most eliminations, which is awesome to see. And it looks like good old Steph Delander is our new number one contender for the women's queens of the Lariat League Cup. And just to see here, didn't choose a winner, but let's just quickly run through. These are the 10 quote unquote best women on our roster outside of the three that are in the main uh, show. We've got Becca Shakara, who's been here since day one. Danny Luna, Heidi Katrina, former queen of the Lariat League. Kanji, Martina, May Serrar. Steph Delander, our winner, Gia Brookside, and Zoe Lucas, another OG. Uh, so yeah, 61 rating. The fact that this doesn't include um, like our three, I'd say, top women, um, you know, 61 is pretty good. Um, so I cannot complain. Steph Delander, though, making a statement because, you know, she hasn't really done much on TV. So yeah, really, really pushing for uh, that TV time. And she's definitely going to get it now because she has won the Battle Royale. Uh, but that is our one and only pre-show match. The rest of the card from here on out, I'm hoping, will be top class. And we are kicking off with what should be a awesome match, which could be match of the night already. Um, it is our Prince of the Lariat League match. Mark Andrews defending against what's easily his toughest opponent, 
and one of the toughest men in Lariat League Wrestling. It's Timothy Thatcher. 81, nice. 81 is a very, very strong start. Keep in mind that we are a small company with a popularity of what, 55, I think? So an 81 to kick off our show is insane. So in about that had superb wrestling and great heat, it is Timothy Thatcher. He dispatches Mark Andrews in 24 minutes with the London Bridge is falling down. What an appropriate move at London's calling to get the win. And he is our new Prince of the Lariat League, Prince Timothy. Sounds uh, sounds pretty good. But yeah, looking at these numbers though, Mark Andrews with an awesome 71. Timothy Thatcher never disappointing with an 88. Um, our referee Kim Skiles making her debut. Getting over her gimmick as referee is very good apparently. Let's just take a look at her. You know, she looks like a bit of a dum-dum, but, you know, great referee. <laughs> um, and yeah, got the show to a strong start. Got the crowd hotter. Can't complain. We have a new Prince of the Lariat League. Moving on, let's head to our next match, which is kind of a, you know, thrown together match in the final weeks coming up to London's Calling. It's Cara Noir, who believes he was underappreciated and demanded a match at London's Calling. And Chris Brooks debuted to confirm that he will be his opponent at London's Calling. So this is Chris Brooks' debut and Cara Noir's opportunity to prove that he should be a weekly figure on LLW. So let's see what happens in that one. 74, nice. And in another match that had superb wrestling and good heat, it is Cara Noir that defeats Chris Brooks in just under 18 minutes with a sleeper hold. This match got the crowd buzzing. Uh, that's because I listed it as a steal the show. So of course, these two men did their very best. Cara Noir with a 78, which is amazing to see. And Chris Brooks debuting with a 72, coming back to the UK after his lengthy stint in Japan. I mean, he's still over there, but he's definitely someone that I'm looking to kind of keep hold of for a little while. But yeah, 72, awesome. I'm tempted now to bring Kid Lycos in. You know, get Chris Brooks and Kid Lycos back together, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but yeah, awesome, awesome match. 74, man, this is going to be a great show. I mean, already we've got an 81, a 74. I, I think it's just going to get better from here. Um, and post-match, as a sign of respect, Chris Brooks and Cara Noir shake hands and celebrate. Chris Brooks really putting over Cara Noir being like, you know what, you do deserve everything. So let's hope that you get booked a little bit better. And Cara Noir does the same, you know, bows to Chris Brooks, you know, lets him know that he was an amazing opponent. A nice little 68 segment, you know, not much happens here, just a shaking of hands and, you know, the crowd's just celebrating. Following this, though, the ladders are being prepared around the ring because it's time for our Queen of the Lariat League three-way match. Rina Yamashita, our current queen, taking on former queen, Aisha Ray and new challenger Megan Bain, who literally beat her way into this match. Uh, I'm hoping this will be a really good one because these, in my opinion, are probably our three strongest women at this time. So uh, let's see if anyone can dethrone Rina Yamashita, who we might, we, well, we have to add, turned this match into a three way and added the ladder stipulation. So she's just making life difficult for herself. So yeah. Let's, uh, let's find out what happens right now. And in about that had superb wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd, it is Rina Yamashita who retains. She retrieves her belt from the top of the ladder and makes defense number three of her Lariat League title. And a 77, easily, by a country mile, our best match in the women's division. Rina Yamashita with a 73, Aisha Ray with a 68, Megan Bain with a 69, all three of these women overperforming because, you know, it's the big occasion, it's what they need to do, and, uh, yeah, I, I couldn't be happier. A 77, that is amazing. I, I'm over the moon of this card so far. Rina killed it, she's still our queen. Can anyone defeat Rina Yamashita? I mean, Steph Delanda's up next, so... We'll have to wait and see what happens between those. But a great showing between Aisha Ray and Megan Bain, who both, you know, have a little bit of beef between one another. So I imagine a rivalry will continue here because Aisha is still not over the beatdown that Megan Bain gave her. Maybe 
that's why she lost a little bit distracted too focused on uh, getting revenge instead of uh, having her eyes on the prize uh, but nonetheless an awesome awesome match here between Rena, Aisha and Megan following on from this though we head backstage just while the ladders are being cleared and we get a nice little promo from Ashton Smith our current king of the Lariat League he just hits a promo saying I've been here since day one I've carried the king of the Lariat League title on my back to a record number of defenses that will never be beaten in the history of LLW win or lose tonight I am LLW through and through you cut me and I bleed the black and white of Lariat League wrestling and I just hope that I can one put on the performance of a lifetime in tonight's main event and two stay your king of the Lariat League so slightly confident promo here from Ashton Smith but also he understands the the task that he's got ahead of him and you know playing the ultimate baby face he just says that he hopes that he can get the win and continue to represent the company that he's fallen in love with and in all honesty Ashton we fall in love with you I mean I'm falling in love with him I don't know about you guys but I'm a big fan of Ashton Smith I've got no fucking clue who he was before this um and yeah i've watched a bunch of his matches on youtube i follow him on instagram now you know we've built this connection and he doesn't even know i exist so uh yeah <laughs> nice little 60 rated promo wouldn't be anything amazing because you know his promo skills aren't off the charts but they are passable uh, at what our level is so you know we'll take that uh but the ring has been cleared now and joe anawaii has made his way out and he is issuing his open challenge to anyone in LLW who wants to step up and challenge him one on one on the biggest stage in LLW's history who's it going to be let's find out and it is the new Dragon Gate signing Madoka Kakuta he is wasting no time by challenging what is probably the biggest name in LLW and in about that had superb wrestling and great heat Joe Anawaii puts Madoka Kakuta away in 21-47 with a spear. Joe Anawaii gets an 85 rating. My goodness. Uh, Madoka Kakuta with a 68 and debuts his cocky youth gimmick, which got a rating of poor, which isn't very good. Um, so hopefully that can get a little bit better. But a 76 overall, awesome, awesome match. Joe Anawaii really pulling it out of the bag with an 85 and a really good start. From Kakuta with a 68 you know once he gets used to the lariat way and you know start stringing some wins together he's going to be awesome um yeah and post-match it's not built as a segment but post-match Joanna Hawaii helps Madoka Kakuta up raises his arm and lets Kakuta just have a moment in the ring because this was an awesome awesome debut performance from him and Joanna Hawaii you know kind of gives him his you know ribbons or however you describe it um, but the Anawaii Open Challenge, I'm assuming, will return soon. He doesn't seem to be interested in any gold as of yet, but I'm sure that will change in the future. Uh, following on from this, though, we have got Trent Seven's final match in LLW. It's Tyler Bate, his, one of his best friends, his partner for years. Uh, he is the opponent that Trent Seven chose. And so we are going to have one epic affair between two incredibly close friends Tyler Bate and Trent Seven uh, let's see what happens in this one and in about that had superb wrestling again of course it did uh, Tyler Bate defeats Trent Seven in his final match in 16 minutes 47 with the Tyler driver 97 Tyler Bate putting on an incredible 88 rated performance Trent Seven a 43 one of the reasons why we're letting him go because um, he's crap as a road agent as well um, match was a little too short for such an important match. I'm really sorry guys, but Trent Seven can't go any longer. So that's the best I could do um, But Tyler Bates shone in this match. Of course he does. He's amazing He's gonna be one of the best wrestlers in the world in this local to global. I'm putting my money on that right now uh, They've got good chemistry together. Of course they do They know the ins and outs of each other and they have done for years 72 which is weirdly enough the weakest match of the night um, and still an amazing rating a world-class rating for the level that we're at so yeah awesome awesome match um, and post-match regal comes into the ring shakes trent seven's hand tyler and trent 
you know, hug it out and him and the crowd celebrate together. Um, Trent, you know, kind of twists his moustache, bows to the crowd, waves away and leaves his, you know, signature towel that he has over his neck, leaves it hanging on the ropes um, as he leaves as just a sign of to be like, this is it, I'm done. And that is how Trent Seven's career at LLW ends. Not the, not the greatest career, not the most decorated career, but he's definitely made an impact of sorts and he leaves behind a really positive story and a positive ending uh, to his LLW career. So after this, you know, when we return to the office, we will do the honours of sacking him <laughs> because that's the only way to get rid of him. Um, but yeah, that is uh, the end of Trent Seven and the Mustache Mountain. Tyler Bate is now on his own, which to be fair, isn't the end of the world because he is a former King of the Larry League and a, a star. Following on from this though, we've got two matches remaining. We have got the three-way tag team match coming up next. That is Ricky Knight Jr. and Colby Carino, our Knights of the Lariat League, taking on the double number one contenders, New Blood and the 0120. Let's jump straight into it and see what happens. And in about that had superb wrestling, a 79 rated match. It's the New Blood of Ishin and Diamante that defeat Ricky Knight Jr., Colby Carino, and the 01210 when Ishin makes Colby Carino tap. The New Blood are now our new Knights of the Lariat League. Darice was the weak link, but we won't worry about that. Looking at the numbers here though, Colby with a 73, wow. Ricky Knight with a 78, killing it. Ricky Knight exclusive to LLW now. Ishin with a 67. Uh, Diamante with a 71, Darius yeah, with a 57, not the best, Dan Maloney killing it with a 76. Where are all these numbers coming from? We should hold big events more often. And a 79 rated match overall. I believe that's the second highest rated match of the night. I might be wrong. No. Yes. Yeah? I don't know. Either way, we're all we're seeing is green and that's incredible. So that means we have got new Knights of the Lariat League. So, so far of our four title matches so of our four title matches tonight, three of them have happened so far. We've had one defense and two new champions. Are we going to split it down the middle and have two defenses, two new champions? Or is it going to be 3-1 in the term, in terms of the new champions? Uh, but another huge match, a great match here. I don't know if Ricky Knight Jr. and Colby are going to stay as a tag team. Or, you know, maybe Ricky Knight and Colby are going to break off uh, and be singles again. But we're going to have to wait and see. The 0 one 2 are an exciting little team that I want to keep using and New Blood are our new faces of the tag division winning the Knights of the Lariat League. But this now does take us to our main event. Ashton Smith, who has been the face of the company literally since day one, a record number of defences and he is now facing what I would say is his biggest challenge to date. Tyler Bate was a huge challenge but he overcame him in the rematch He's now got to face Drew Galloway, one of the biggest wrestlers in terms of size, menace, wrestling ability and popularity to come out of the UK. And that is the man that he has to beat to stay our king of the Lariat League. So let's not waste any more time and let's dive straight into our LLW London's Calling main event. Ashton Smith, Drew Galloway, let's go. Oh, fuck off. An 87. An 87 rated main event in a bout that had superb wrestling, my favourite word, and great heat. Drew Galloway is our new king of the Lariat League when he defeats Ashton Smith in 24 minutes with a Claymore kick. Ashton Smith with a 71 rated performance. Awesome from him. Drew Galloway with an 89, our highest rated performance of the night incredibly deserving of that king of the lariat league title and both of them have got great chemistry which is amazing oh we're gonna definitely have a rematch down the line um but an 87 rated main event i think that's our joint highest rated match so far or possibly our highest rated match so far but this is easily gonna be our best show ever it has to be um, but it's not over yet because while Drew Galloway has got the streamers flying down, he's celebrating in the ring. Ashton Smith has left the ring. William Regal just does a little like on the mic, a little tap, tap, tap. 
just to get his attention a little. <coughs> and the crowd kind of simmer down and look over to Regal, who's now stood up on the ramp. He says, congratulations, Drew, and congratulations to everyone on this night. I do have some special news. And Drew, don't worry, this does not affect you. If anything, it makes your reign easier. Because henceforth, we have new title rulings. No longer does the Lariat League titles need to be defended at every opportunity. So Drew, should you be in a singles match on a TV show that is not explicitly for the King of the Lariat League title, then your title will be safe. Also, we have new rulings surrounding the Prince of the Lariat League title. When it comes to, you know, monarchy and reigns, the prince is effectively the heir to the throne, making them the next king of the Lariat League, for example. This means that henceforth, any person who is the prince of the Lariat League can put their prince title on the line at risk and challenge the king of the Lariat League. Should they win, they will vacate the Prince of the Lariat League title and become the new king. Should they lose, they will lose their Prince title and are unable to regain that title until someone else has claimed that belt. So those are the new rules of the Lariat League. Titles will become more prestigious. Title matches will mean more. And the Prince's, the prince's title has now become that much more valuable. I thank you all very much for an amazing night of wrestling. And just as William Regal is about to finish talking, Timothy Thatcher's music hits. He comes down to the ring holding his Prince of the Lariat League title and immediately invokes his new clause. Not tonight, but he is letting Drew Galloway know that at the next available opportunity, the prince is coming for the king. And that is how we end LLW London's calling. Let's see how we did. An 84. Oh my God. What a show. This is easily, easily the best show we have done in a long time. Look at these numbers. This is like you know, awesome. I mean, think about it. Think about it. Just think about it. A med any medium-sized company would bite your hand off for a show like this. To be fair, any big company would happily take a show like this. And yeah, we've crushed it. Like 87. Unreal. Just quickly reviewing the card. Steph Delander, new number one contender for the Queen's title. Timothy Thatcher, our new Prince of the Lariat League. Cara Noir and Chris Brooks putting on an awesome match. Rina Yamashita, the only champion defending their title tonight and retaining. Uh, Joe Anawai putting over Madoka Kakuta as a potential future star, but Joe obviously is the star of LLW. Tyler Bay, not retiring Trent Seven, but you know, kind of giving him a, a farewell to LLW where Trent Seven can go on and do whatever the hell he wants, wherever he wants. Uh, the New Blood are our new Knights of the Lariat League, defeating Ricky Knight Jr. and Colby Carino. Will they stay a tag team? Who knows? And then finally, in an epic match of the year candidate, you know, because let's be honest, what's going to top this? Uh, Drew Galloway defeats Ashton Smith to become our new King of the Lariat League. And as per Regal's new rulings, Thatcher has already declared that he is putting his Prince's title at risk to challenge Drew Galloway. What an amazing show. So happy with it. And just think, the, the names that we left off, Claudio wasn't here. Pac wasn't here. Who else was left off that's a big name? There's a few more, but those are the two main, like there's no Pac. I tried to think of a way to fit Pac in. I was going to do Joanna O.I. and Pac, but that's way too big to just do as a throwaway thing. Um, so I thought a debut made more sense. Um, Shun Skywalker didn't make it because the guy decided to be at Dragon Gate instead of with us last week. You know, a bunch of other names didn't make this card which just goes to show the depth that we already have and as we head towards medium um, but let's stop talking now let's make our speech obviously drew galloway we're gonna give him a hug no we're gonna tell him they're awesome ashton smith we have to give him a hug he's been incredible and 
Timothy Thatcher. He was amazing as well. Let's praise for a great performance. But yeah, one, two, three. Cool. Oh, I need to take a breath. I need to have a drink. Um, do you know what? I'm going to go do that now while we head uh, back to the office. So I'll see you guys in a moment. Okay, I've had my drink. I'm all good. We're here in the office. And as you can see, we mentioned about all of those big names that were left off the card. And <laughs> we've got quite a few people that are not happy with us. Uh, Michael Locke, who's not happy. Tracy Williams, Levi Muir, Charlie Sterling, El Hijo del Fantasma, who was very unlucky to not be featured. Leon Slater, Chuck Mambo, Anthony Agogo, Chris Ridgway, and then of course the two guys we mentioned, Claudio and Pac, are all not very happy with us. Um, and yeah, that is uh, Kojima is obviously still yet to debut. He did, he was used as a road agent, obviously, but I think it's an, uh, they appear on screen, they debut. Um, but yeah, let's take a look at the emails. Just got the one we got: a hundred and seventy-six thousand. 785 viewers worldwide that is not bad looking at our money as well uh, bah, 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 bah. Um, we made 46,241 so far um, which is really really good when you think about it we've done the one event and we've made we've made profit looking at the costs and everything ticket sales look at that 112k uh, and then have we gone up in pop we have awesome okay so we are now three away so yeah we've got we so we went up by two here so there's normally a trend distance that's when we bought them so 40 so that was a two that was a two so 51 to 54 that was a three wow okay that was a one so we could go up another one this month because we do still have four more shows awesome these guys i'm gonna try and pay off maybe um yeah, I'm going to try and pay these guys off. Well, some of them, because, like, the minor morale issue is not fuss. Pack, we want to make him happy. Um, Phantasma, probably want to make him happy. Some of these lower guys, I'm not really fussed if they're a bit annoyed at the moment. Um, but, yeah, we'll ignore that. Let's just quickly recap our titles, because, obviously, new champion, Drew Galloway. Uh, new knights, champions, Diamante and Ishin. New prince, champion, Timothy Thatcher. And a new... Oh, not a new queen, sorry. And still queen of the lariat league 67 days now rena yamashita lovely 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 um and then let's just head to creative just to see what's guan in here drew galloway of course is up there wow ashton smith loses the title and loses his place as a franchise player uh timothy thatcher though shooting up there uh with that big win the next big things of course kakuta is going to be the next big thing hot prospects yep i agree with all of that Talk the talk. These ones won't really change too much. Just taking a look at them all now. Uh, oh, Ring General Kakuta's up there. Oh, yeah, because he's got mad numbers, doesn't he? Yeah. Wow. Get that pop up, Kakuta. You could be next star. Who's hot? Ashton Smith's dropped a little bit because, of course, he has just lost his belt. Um, but Thatcher, you know, he can do no wrong, and I agree with that. And then who's not? Kakuta, obviously, both of these guys have got a 0 1 record. So we're going to have to change that as soon as. And of course, hidden gems never change. And I'm never signing any of them. But yeah, let's see what that's done to Ashton Smith's popularity, if anything. Um, track progress, uh, 52, 52. Uh, okay, it hasn't affected his pop too much. Cool. Uh, what about Drew? Oh, there we go, Drew. Has his popularity jumped up because of that win? It must have. 54, 61. Oh, no, it's the same. Okay, nothing's changed too much. Fair enough. Um, let's just get rid of that. But yeah, awesome, awesome match. Uh, what is Joanna Wise's popularity? 66, okay. In America, in America, he's only 71. Really? What happened? Is it because he disappeared for a while? Yeah, you can see it's been dropping. And now hopefully it's starting to increase. That means that in America, yeah, because he went on hiatus, obviously it's going to drop. But it's all right, man. We got you. We're going to build you back up. Don't worry. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to start signing a few more people to exclusive deals, um, just for like long-term sake and working it out. I think exclusive deals on a handshake or on a per show basis makes sense. So for example, we've got Joe NOI here is 5,000 per show, which you think is crazy, but the way that we book is we book two shows on one night. 
and we don't ever use that we don't ever have the same person wrestle on both shows because effectively to the live audience that's a three hour show does that make sense so that means that joe noi will only ever be used twice a month yeah so that means it's ten thousand a month for joe noi whereas if you wanted to do um, a per month thing it was something like 30k so this is the smart way to do it when you kind of you know want to save a bit of money uh, but yeah there's not much else to look at we're not gonna change our ranking at all just by going up by one pop uh so yeah i think that is how we're gonna end it let's just get the match up was it definitely our top 100 yeah oh easily our best show yet what are they saying in the news uh the feedback's been that the show was awesome how did raw do 81 we did better than raw main event 63 wait who's the main event of raw gunther and dragon lee that's an interesting team yeah Oro Mensa. Who's Oro Mensa? Oliver Carter. I have no idea who that is. Okay. Charlie Dempsey and oh, oh Charlie Dempsey. Yeah. Isn't he William Regal's like son or something? Yeah, I think he is. Should we add him to our what? Uh, where we go? Shortlist. Yeah. That's why not. Uh, but yeah, what I'll do. We are in November right now. When we get to the end of this calendar year, because um, I know some of you guys have been requesting it, we're gonna do a kind of we'll do a review for ourselves but we'll also take a look at you know new japan wwe aew all the big promotions there's even ring of honor impact because they're bigger promotions now just to see you know who they've got what they're doing who their champions are because uh, i haven't looked that's the most i've seen of from wwe pretty much since this saver started um so yeah let's uh just end it by looking at this fantastic card can we not view it here can we view it here there we go look at that oh the wembley arena love it not wembley stadium wembley arena there's a difference um wembley arena is like the kind of smaller one to the side um, i think uh nxt takeover london back when it was finn balor uh samoa joe was it finn balor samoa joe i was there i should know um that arena either way i'm rambling now i'm really sorry i'm just i'm excited um it's a new era for llw we are awesome we're gonna get medium as soon as possible and i can't wait because the second we hit medium we're signing all of our big players all of our slightly medium players to exclusive deals and we're gonna go out and we're gonna bring in a whole bunch of new names um and then hopefully the money can just start pouring and get some proper tv deals because when you're medium youtube ain't gonna cut it um and yeah really excited let me know your thoughts on the card guys uh, let me know um, your thoughts on the roster, anyone you want me to push, uh, and just your general reactions. Uh, but with that, I'm going to leave it here. Thank you very much. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, do it all, and I will see you all in the next one.